Good evening and welcome to the Bison Information Network. I'm Malik Mitchell. And I'm Logan Gettenberg. We have the latest campus and local news coming up for this evening, so don't go anywhere. The Graduate Student Council Research Symposium took place on Tuesday. The Student Research Day consisted of a collaboration among NDSU Explorer, Gamma Sigma Delta, and the Graduate Student Council. This one-day event was dedicated to providing, to providing NDSU graduate and undergraduate students an opportunity to present their research and creative works for an award. At the annual showcase, these three organizations presented their research to be judged and evaluated based on oral presentations and poster sessions. Well, NDSU is always excited to put on the Student Research Day. It brings together communities from across the campus to just celebrate the excellence of the undergraduates in their research and all the innovative and impactful projects that they've been working on, and it's wonderful to have that shared across the campus so that everyone can see what's happening and we're really excited every year to just see all the projects that come through. Next Tuesday, NDSU Student Government will host a one-day community thrift store in the Memorial Union from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. near Caribou Coffee. Anybody is welcome to donate clothing and small furniture items beforehand. Tomorrow is the last day they will be collecting donations from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Memorial Union. All proceeds will go to the NDSU Student Emergency Fund. Cash and card will be accepted for the event. Last Thursday, the Blue Key Honor Society hosted its first annual Bison Brevis fundraiser. This year's fundraiser was a talent show titled I Bison as it followed the theme of I Carly. Performances ranged from bands and solo singers and lip singers of pitches. Dances cowboys, trolling streamers across the stage. The crowd favorite was Patrick Compatrick III, who performed an all weird song and the pole dancing prevented spaghetti tacos to the audience. All profits were donated to Cully's Kids and a nonprofit which helps local children who are battling cancer and other life threatening diseases. The event raised over five. $5,000. If you have a passion for fashion and want to spend the night celebrating local designers and fashion trends, the Fabo Fashion Show is for you. NDSU Fashion Apparel Businesses organizing, or Organization is hosting its 22nd annual fashion show. This year's theme is day and night fashion, covering everything from everyday casual to outfits for a night out. A multitude of local brands will be represented on the runway by NDSU students. This show is free and will be held at noon on Wednesday, April 26th in the Memorial Union Ballroom. For the 34th annual Gokumen Award Ceremony will take place on May 3rd at 3 p.m. The committee and NSU staff would like you all to attend the reception. The event will honor the 2022-2023 nominees and the recipient of the Mary Gokumen Award. For those who are not aware, this award has been established by the Gulkman family to honor the memory of this former student and active citizen in the community. The purpose of this award is to recognize the NDSU student and staff member, administrator, or faculty member, who has been the most significant in contribution to creating a happy environment for the students here on campus. The reception is set to host at the Harry D. McGovern Alumni Center. NDSU's production of 12 Night premieres tonight at 7.30. The plot follows a shipwrecked twins swapped identities and the plethora of complicated love triangles with sword fights. This Shakespeare's play has been modern punked authentic, which adds to the inspiring art artistic of the extreme entering show. All performances start at 7.30 p.m. and show dates run from April 20th to the 22nd and 27th to the 29th. Tickets can be found on NDSU.showr.com or on NDSU's theater's homepage. Students even get free admission. All you have to do is fill out a Google form with your student ID number so you can claim your ticket now. Coming up after the break, Earth Day, the yearly celebration of the planet in efforts to better the environment. The Red River continues to rise after rainy conditions and the shooting of a teen in Kansas City that made national headlines. Stay tuned. There are so many great things to experience at NDSU. It's hard to pick one, but my favorite is the people. They make it such a warm place. The bison aren't just across the country, they're across the globe. It's the perfect distance from home. The faculty are our biggest cheerleaders. Hands-on research experience. The affordable tuition. All the opportunities to stay active on campus. Real world learning experiences. Once I got on campus, it felt like home.
My name is Addie Stewart and I graduated from NDSU in the Department of Communication in 2018. My degree was in Strategic Communication and I'm the Communications Specialist for the City of West Fargo. So that includes social media, press releases, breaking news, interviews, media relations, and more. I went into communication because I wanted to do something I was passionate about. There were so many opportunities. I knew I could work for nonprofits, government, small business, agency work. Professors in the department definitely impacted me a lot in my life, making sure that once I graduated college, I knew I could get a job here just because of the connections in the department and the great morale that was in Fargo. Future students should definitely come to NDSU because it's a degree like no other here. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need to show off your bison pride. The bookstore can have you sporting green and gold wherever you go. It offers many different brands, sizes, styles, and selection so that you find exactly what you're looking for. Shop the NDSU Bookstore and show your spirit today. With spring well underway, Earth Day is just around the corner. On Saturday, men will be celebrating the planet and making a conscious effort to better the environment. One way to celebrate the holiday is to head on over to the Red River Spring Market. The West Acres Mall and MSUM Student Sustainability Association are partnering to host this Earth Day's market. This year's event will host more than 40 local vendors featuring everything from meals and pastries to art and live music. This year's market has it all. The market would go from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at MSUM, your Comstock Memorial Union. Even though Fargo may be starting to look like a water park with the recent flooding, its citizens will have to wait a little bit longer on the construction of one. The Wave, an epic company's water park resort, was planned to be built in South Fargo by 2024. However, the company is now saying that it is pushing the timeline back to 2025 as it continues to court potential investors. Mackenzie Bratton, the VP of Communications for Epic, stated that the company hopes to have all funding lined up by June 1st, with construction beginning around early July. The hotel aspect will consist of a 135-room facility. With the water park itself encompassing about 50,000 square feet, it will make it the largest water park in North Dakota. As Fargo continues to get hit with rain and snow, the Red River is expected to rise. Yesterday, there was a scattered showers, and today it's been rain and light snow. According to the National Weather Service, the Red River is continuing to swell with meltwater and can reach to at around 34 feet by next Monday. As of Tuesday, the Red River surpassed 30, 23 feet, while the moderate flood stage begins at 25 feet, and the major flood stage begins at 30 feet. Fargo officials have said they will rely on permanent flood protection, including levees and flood walls. However, they do not expect to deploy emergency measures to hold back the flood. As crime reports decline, the West Fargo Police Department is reporting an overall increase in mental health and service calls. In total, officers responded to 29,732 calls for the service in 2022. Officials say that there was a 10.7% decrease in overall crime. Sex crimes dropped to 34 in 2022 from 46 in 2021. Also reports of burglaries, robberies, and drug violations all dropped in 2022 from the previous year. However, in 2022, officers responded to 96 mental health calls compared to 64 in 2021 and 65 in 2020. The department also responded to 80 calls for suicide threats in 2022 compared to uh, 66 in 2021. Fans of the sitcom Animal Control may remember a funny episode about a bobcat, but for two Wisconsin deputies, this was no TV show. Portage County deputies responded to an unusual call on Tuesday night where a driver reported that a bobcat was inside his car and refused to get out. The deputies were shocked when they arrived and found a live bobcat inside the vehicle's front grille. The deputies, along with a game warden, managed to wrangle the bobcat with a catch pole and, after prying off the broken grill, pulled the large feline out. Understandably, the bobcat was not pleased to be dragged out from its hiding place. However, the game warden was able to swiftly move the bobcat to the bed of his pickup before safely returning it to the wild. As the famous saying goes, all in a day's work. The shooting of six-year-old Ralph Yarrow made national headlines after the teen was shot and wounded on April 13th in Kansas City, Missouri. The African-American teen was shot when he rang the wrong doorbell of the wrong house. His family says he was trying to pick up his younger siblings from a house nearby when he was shot twice. 
what's in the head and what's in the arm. Police say that Euro was shot by an 84-year-old white homeowner who fired, through him, who fired at him through a glass door. That homeowner was named Andrew Lester. Lester told police that he shot Euro after he believed the teenager was trying to force his way into his home. That claim has been denied by Euro and his family. Lester was taken into custody at the Clay County Detention Center on Tuesday, but was shortly released after a $200,000 bond. Yesterday, during his first court appearance, Lester pleaded not guilty to first-degree assault and armed criminal action. Yarrow has, has since been discharged from Children's Mercy Hospital and is recovering at home. When we come back, Dad's Mental has your Bison Sports Report. Stay tuned. My name is Becky Parker, and I'm a news anchor at WDAY-TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting, and mass communication technologies, and then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Sure. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews. You're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment. It's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. Bison baseball had a three-game series against St. Thomas and St. Paul, and they dominated the first game early, scoring seven runs in the first two innings, and it was capped off with a two-run home run by Drew Sackett. The Bison controlled the rest of the game and won 13-3 in eight innings. Caden Schwabe had two runs, four hits, and two RBIs. James Dunlap had two runs, two hits, and four RBIs. And Drew Sackett had his home run, along with three runs and two RBIs. Game two would play, play out in a similar fashion, except instead of scoring seven runs in the first two innings, the Bison scored nine. Those included home runs from Terrell Hugens and Steven Lund. These nine points would be enough to secure a 10-4 victory. James Dunlap had two runs, two hits, and three RBIs, and Terrell Hugens had one run, two hits, and three RBIs. Game three would not go as smoothly. The pitching duo of Parker Putes and Skyler Reidinger only allowed two runs all game, but the Bison's only run came in the ninth inning off an RBI single from Jack Style. The Tommies would hit an RBI single of their own in the bottom of the ninth to win the game 2-1. to one. The Bison are now 10-24, and, and due to field conditions, the Bison's home series against Oral Roberts has been moved to Council Bluffs, Iowa. The first game will start at 3 p.m. tomorrow. The softball team faced their toughest test of the season as they traveled to Brookings, South Dakota to play South Dakota State. The first game was a 4-0 loss as the Bison were only able to manage three hits off of star SCSU pitcher Tori Kanishi. The Bison started off game two well by securing a 3-2 lead after the third inning, but the wheels fell off the bus in the fourth inning as the Jackrabbits scored 10 runs to run away with a 12-3 win. Carly Gochias had two hits, two runs, and an RBI, and freshman Bella Dean had one hit and two RBIs. The third game was a pitching duel between Paige Vargas and Tori Kanishi, and the only score came off of an RBI single from SDSU in the sixth inning, as the Jackrabbits would sweep the Bison with a 1-0 victory in Game 3. The Bison are now 23-16, and and they will travel to St. Paul, Minnesota to play the St. Thomas Tommies. The first game will start at noon on Saturday. 
The track and field teams traveled out to California last weekend to compete in the Brian Clay Invitational, the Pacific Coast Intercollegiate, and the Beach Invitational. For the men, Jacob Rodin broke the outdoor school record in the 800 meter, running a time of 1 minute and 47 seconds. Jacob Levine finished second in the 200 meter dash in a time of 21.14 seconds. Trevor Otterdahl finished second in the shot put with a throw of 18.59 meters. And the team of Josh Knudsen, Colin Curl, Jacob Levine, and Jacob Rodin finished second in the 4x400 meter relay with a time of 3 minutes and 9 seconds. For the women, it was an impressive showing for Kendra Kelly. She ran a career best time of 23.69 seconds in the 200 meter dash to finish second. She also took over the number two spot in NDSU history in both the 100 and 200 meter dashes. Also, the team of Kendra Kelly, Nell Graham, Bailey Dirks, and Angel Pratt finished second in the 400, 4 by 400 meter relay with a time of three minutes and 39 seconds. Both teams will travel to Iowa and Minnesota this weekend to compete in the Drake Relays, the Kip Janvren Open, and the Ron Mazans Classic. Earlier this week, the men's golf team traveled to the Red Hawk Invitational in Fox Chapel, Pennsylvania for their final meet of the regular season, and the team finished 6 out of 14 teams, but one golfer finished tied for first individually. That golfer would be Nate Adams, who was the only golfer in the tournament who shot par or better in all three rounds. He finished tied for first at 1 under par. Brock Winters finished tied for 16th after a great final round, and Nate Diesel finished tied for 21st place with a score of 9 over par. The men will have two weeks off before they compete in the Summit League Championships in Lincoln, Nebraska. The tournament will start on April 30th. Well, that is all for the Bison Sports Report. Now over to Coy Hartle with the weather. Coy, it's happened again. We see that warm weather and we think that spring is officially here. And then Mother Nature decides to change her mind and drop some more cold weather on us as we see outside right now. Yeah, I mean, it was looking good with the rainfall earlier today, but that did turn into the snowfall as the day went on. So, yeah, colder weather is still on the way. And as you can see behind us, we do have a Case IH tractor. I just want to make it very clear that we are not sponsored by Case IH. We hope to see some more green in the lawns and in our tractors. So, if John Deere, if you're just said we are always open for that that possibility taking a look at what's going on currently we're, we are seeing some fog going on as that rain is rain and snow is continuing to come down and then right now the temperature is sitting at 35 degrees at the airport however that wind chill does that drop that down to 31 degrees and then we are having winds out of the north at eight miles per hour right now Taking a look at the hour by hour for the rest of the night, as you can see overcast skies as the night goes on, we won't be getting much sun or, or clear skies throughout, or I should say as the morning goes on. And then we are seeing temperatures drop off and it will reach 27 degrees as we get to six in the morning. Taking a look at the sky cast this morning, sun rose 6.30, sun, set, sun will set at 8.22 p.m., gives about 13 hours and 52 minutes of daylight there. And then we are currently in the waxing crescent phase with a first quarter moon coming up in about a week or so. And taking a look at today's almanac, Today's high was 36 with a low of 31, a little bit lower than what we're used to seeing for this time of year. Average high is 57 with an average low of 34, which is also very different from the record high in 1980 at 94 degrees and the record low in 96 at 11. So although we're a little bit lower, we're not quite at the extremes that we did see in those years there. Taking a look at what's going on across the country, we are seeing much of the colder stuff going on in the Midwest and into the Montana area as well. We are seeing temperatures in the 30s and 20s there. And then as you go down south and further to the east coast, that's where we are seeing temperatures in the, in the lower to mid 80s. So they're really seeing some warm temperatures there that we won't be seeing for quite some time in the Fargo-Moorhead area. Also taking a look at the next 48 hours for the rain and snow forecast. As you can see, we are seeing some snow coming up in, the, in North Dakota and in, in Minnesota as well. That's really all we'll be seeing for that for across much of the country besides the Rocky Mountain area over there and then we are seeing rainfall happening across the east coast as well but we won't again we won't be seeing much of that tomorrow about an inch or so of snow in the Fargo Moorhead area for us. And taking a look at the next seven days, kicking off as we go into the weekend, Earth Day, well tomorrow we'll have some snowfall at 31 degree, with 31 degrees as a high, and then Saturday, Earth Day drops off just a bit with a high of 30 degrees, and then Sunday starts picking up a bit, and we do get some of that sun, sunshine back. Taking a look as the week goes on, Monday we'll have a high of 42 and a low of 18. We will see, continue to see that sunshine throughout the week, and then as we go through the week, temperatures will continue to rise as we go into the week with a high of 55 on Thursday and a low of 30. Six. Also had this picture that I was able to take as I was back home on Easter break. Can't really tell from here, but usually the creek is much, much lower. So this just really demonstrates how much snowfall we did see and how, mu how much the water is running back home on the other side of the state in Watford City, North Dakota. If any of you watching at home see any interesting photo or see any interesting weather in your area, then be sure to snap a photo or grab a video and you can send them to us online and we would love to feature them on the show. Another thing, we also had some 
some holidays today, some national days that we're seeing. National Lima Bean Respect Day is going on today, National High Five Day, and also National Auctioneer Day. So if you have any auctioneers in your life, just be sure to give them a big thank you on their special day. Well, that's all I have for weather and whatever else for today. So back to you at the desk, Dash. Well, I mean, I, you know, the weather seems to be finally getting warm again next week. I think we can have a National High Five on High Five Day for that. That's right. Virtual High Five. <laughs> Absolutely. And that is all for the uh, Bin Newscast. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you again next week. Thank you.